All right, you're good to go. All right. Good morning, everyone. This is the uh, mayor manager meeting on May 27th. Oh my gosh. And it's um, 831 and in the room is Linda Olson, Allison McKinney Brown, Dorothy Hargrove, Jade Truscott Reed, Othan Yule, Sierra and Sean Lewis. And by meaning in the room, we are on Microsoft Teams. <laughs> Um, Stephanie will be joining in us shortly as well. Oh, all right. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Dorothy's last mayor manager meeting. <laughs> we keep having all these lasts. I don't like it. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to have some firsts, like the first coffee after she retired, first, <laughs> first golf game after she retired. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the video last night was fun. All the people referencing her fishing habit. <laughs> right. No one could figure out what um, Adrian was tying. You know, it was a, um, a, a big stone fly. He catches big fish. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I knew it was a fly, but I had not seen one quite so large. Yeah, that was big. I thought I thought he did it for effect. <laughs> he may have. He may have. That was very nice, despite the fact that, <laughs> that I did not like my face. <laughs> I All right. thought it was fine, Linda. We we <laughs> none of us liked how we looked or sounded. And what was I doing with that coffee mug the whole time? Good grief! <laughs> oh, just put it down. Okay. Um, At least it wasn't anyway. a red brick. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, let's um start. You want to start with June one? I can't believe we're already going to be in June, but we have um, one study session item, um, and I know that's um, been uploaded um, into our system, and that is for body worn uh, cameras for police, and so we we're anticipating about a thirty minute discussion on that. And then moving on to the regular session, we've got a contract for um, water treatment plant risk and resiliency study and uh, a motion for a pre-development agreement with SKB for city center redevelopment. <clears throat> and then I am trying to remember where this resolution uh, supporting local restaurants um, came from. Can someone remind me? Um, yes, let me let me jump on that one, Jade. Let's pull that off. We were wondering about two weeks ago if we were going to need to do a resolution to allow um, outdoor restaurant seating. Turns out we're not because the governor's taken other actions, so that just needs to be removed. But it was, it was just in a holding pattern. Great. <clears throat> and then we'll have um, a first reading of an opt out ballot question. And Allison, do you want to expound on that one a little bit too? Well, yeah, that actually should be under Margaret's name. I'm noticing things are popping up under my name a lot, like the uh, the thing on the agenda last night should have should have been Sean. Um, that is the broadband that to give the city back its uh, home rule authority over broadband, and the city council already uh, asked for that to come forward. So that's that ballot measure coming forward on the first. Thank you. you be the one who we ask questions of for the legality of language and stuff so absolutely yeah yeah you're seen as the expert so everybody wants you to cover it <laughs> keep us um, safe keep us legal that's right um <clears throat> next we have second reading of an iga um, with cdot for design and reconstruction of the 285 and south broadway interchange and then a second reading of approval of an IGA with the Urban Drainage and Flood Control District for um, major drainage way planning. And both of those um, were 7 0 on the first reading, so um, they'll be on consent agenda. And then um, last, we will have a proclamation um, for the uh, library birthday. So we're excited about that. And I think Christina will also be updating us on some other. Um, things that the library is planning on doing to really celebrate that milestone. <clears throat> All right, if no questions, we'll move on to June 8th. Um, this is actually, um, this meeting will start at 545 because it's going to be board and commission interviews. I think you had asked to start that one a little bit early. Right, right. And so then we we'll have, have oh, just to get ready uh, for yeah. the six o'clock. It's a little hard to jump right in. Sure. 
And then um, <clears throat> because that one probably is going to take three or more hours, um, we or uh, you all discussed last night at your council meeting about having a special meeting on June 9th. And so um, at that study session, <clears throat> the topics would be uh, downtown matters and DDA authority um, by our planning staff and redevelopment staff. And then um, also the procurement policy has been moved. You may remember this was scheduled for June 1st. Um, Director Sabato was able to talk to Councilmember Stone who had requested this um, along with the rest of council, of course. Um, and she let him know that that was going to need to move back. And um, I think they discussed that already. Um, and then we've got a uh, policy discussion on emergency aid to other agencies. Um, an update on Title 16 community outreach, the responses that we've gotten from the RFP that we did for that. Okay, um, now we go back to the data. We moved it to June 10th. Right? Yeah, last night we said June 10th. Oh, for the special meeting? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, good catch. There was one that didn't, that couldn't do it. No. And so it's all study session that night. There's no decision. Correct. Making. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Good. Good. And the last one on that meeting is restricting local streets to through traffic and the 3400 block of Broadway to all traffic. Um, we have done a survey on that, um, but we I really want to do we're waiting on responses from um, the downtown folks. Um, just from kind of anecdotally talking to just a couple of businesses, I think there there may be a desire to use the alleys um, more than Broadway. Um, as you know, even when we have a huge festival event, it's it's we don't always completely fill up Broadway. And I think the sense is that it could feel like <clears throat> a bit of a ghost town, even if every restaurant and bar pulled, you know, I think we're we've Hello? lost you, or is it me? Oh. Can you hear me now? There yes. We go. Yes. You were you've been cutting out a little bit and doing there's some weird sounds. Oh, sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know. <clears throat> is fine. this better? Yeah. Okay. Did you change something? <laughs> I literally moved my head four inches and I'm right up next to the where I think the microphone is. So weird. that's the issue. Good to know. Um, but but the I just wanted to give a little more clarity. Um, we we have done a survey on that um, closure of Broadway um, to for use as kind of an outdoor seating area. Um, but just anecdotally, we've we've heard from a couple of businesses that their concern is is that even if each business of the ten restaurants and bars that are down there brought in thirty or forty customers, that still creates a pretty empty street, even if everyone's out in the street. And there, we have had some businesses reach out and say, can you just let us focus on the sidewalks, the paseos, and also the alleys? And so um, I'll be talking to Maria D as we get some more information from the um, businesses on whether or not to put this item on the agenda or not. All right, I think that makes a lot of sense. I've heard from a couple of them too, that they just don't think they're gonna have the capacity and it would look weird. I know that that's part of the problem of a few other places. They've, we can do it in the alleys and the sidewalks. That's great. Let's take the sound again. Yeah, I think okay. we we're having some trouble. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you, you have to not move your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using a, a, a camera? No. Um, I do have a call-in number if you would like to use that. Um, I was just digging for it and I did just find it. Okay, let me try this microphone. Is that any better? It seems yeah, to be. You yes. sound clear right now. Okay. Um, all right, sorry about that. And I, naturally, I can't find my headphones to switch to to switch to the headphones. Okay, well, I'll right now. Okay, well, I've switched microphones from my laptop to my screen, so we'll see how that works. Um, okay, let's see. We are on June fifteenth study session. So the study session items for that meeting are website overview, 
Utility Funds Overview and Citizen of the Year. On the regular agenda, we have first reading of the DDA election ordinance, a resolution for new appointments approved by City Council, that's for Boarding Commission, um, contract renewal for Martin and Wood, contract renewal for Berg Hill, first reading of an IGA with RTD for the trolley, and first reading of the Lodgers, tax, uh, Lodgers sales tax increase. Questions on that one? No, nope, not for me. Not for me. Okay. June 22nd, um, discussion on the organized garbage collection subcommittee membership. Um, and then a utility rate discussion. And that is your rate and fee um, analysis discussion. So that one's pretty uh, weighty. I think it looks like we've estimated 60 minutes, I think we'll be lucky to get through that in 60 minutes. I mean, we'll get through the information, but with discussion, it may be a little longer. Uh, and then we have a May 2020 financial review. Good. All right, uh, moving on to July 6th, we have um, an update on the, um, the study session, excuse me, the homeless study. Um, and that will be provided, and, and we did confirm that, Mayor, with um, Sally, right, that she could do that date? On July 6th? Yes. You know, I, I, no, I know that, no, I don't believe so because we've moved it a couple times. Would you like me to call her or do you, want, you, do you all want to? Yeah, I think we can do that. I, I don't believe we talked about <laughs> that date. Right. Maybe we did. I don't know. I, I would confirm with her either way. I'm just making a note here. Okay, great. I will do that. Um, and then uh, we also, moving on to the regular items, we have a public hearing for the DDA. Um, and Let then me jump in on, on that one, Sean. Okay. Uh, I met with, that, with the outside council on that yesterday, and I was asking why we've got a public hearing for that ordinance because it doesn't make any sense to me. It's not required by law. And I think that there was a little bit of miscommunication early on in the process where they thought that because it was it was gonna be going to a ballot measure that the city council would want a public hearing. It's not a quasi judicial, it would be administrative. So uh, I asked them to ask city council if the city council really wanted to hold an administrative public hearing I'm hoping we're back in the regular meeting place by July 6th, but right at the moment, of course, we're just continuing to plan this way. But either way, it's not required. It it It's not something that we're doing for the other two ballot measures. And um, it's not the regular citizens who are the electorate on this. It's it's corporations. It's a lot. It's so anyway, I'm not sure that we need a public hearing for that. And uh, that could be more appropriately the second reading for the DDA election ordinance. All right. Let's do it, whatever. I, I want to help them do what they want to do. So whatever they need is the DDA folks, the folks will have to vote. Yeah, I, I think at this point that having a public hearing is kind of pointless. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not the general electorate of the city of Inglewood. It's it's the corporations that are downtown. So there's really no point in, in having that there. And I think it would mostly be confusing to everybody as we move forward. So my my read up is we just have the second reading on July 6th. Sounds good. And, and um, Allison, are you going to be touching base um, with Dan on that? Yes, as a matter of fact, we've already emailed twice about it this morning. Oh, great. Very good. All right. Um, and then the only other item on that agenda right now is new appointments recognized by City Council for um, just recognition of the new board and commission members. And then July 13th um, is the last item uh, meeting that we have an agenda item on, and that's for the police oversight board discussion. And um, that will be the police department and looks like legal helping with that. Is that correct, Allison? 
that you would be helping with that one? Yeah, we've done some background and research for the police department that will be presented by Chief Collins, not not by me. I watch my name float by on all of this. And so you can tell that we're working with teams that but this really is under Chief Collins. Great. Well, I know everyone in the departments has appreciated the um, extra time and effort that you guys have put into um, yeah, really reaching down into the departments and partnering. Um, I, that's all. I just wanted to clarify the lodgers tax will be or will that be um, community development? Lodgers tax, the lodgers tax is finance. Oh, and then no, the DDS fund, and the DDA is um, Dan Perimba and Brad Powers. Perfect. Thank you. Sean, I was going to ask a question regarding the police oversight board. Will uh -huh. the present presentation also contain? Uh, actually, I would like it for. I would like for it to contain what the current state is. Whenever something does come up, what what is their current process? So just trying to understand what current process is and what the what would change if we went to the oversight board. The current process in terms of oversight. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and perhaps what our process would be if there needed to be some kind of outside investigation or I don't know. Because I'm going with the assumption that everything is done internally. Uh, I may be wrong on that. So I, just understanding, I guess from there, it sounds like three options. What the current state is, uh, if we had a citizen oversight board and third would be what the mayor just stated. If uh, an outside, if yeah, outside group that did the oversight. Okay. And I, I sure would want the police to know this is, I mean, I think this is a good time to do something is when you don't have a crisis, right. you know, you just look at things and say, okay, are we, are we set up really well to honor their um, commitment to us to serve our city like this and to make sure that they're protected um, in all kinds of, you know, incidents that could arise. That's what this is about in my mind. And I hope that they see it that way and not as some kind of a, you know, a, a negative or complaint in any way whatsoever. Yeah, I, I'll definitely pass that along. Um, are there any other um, items on the future um, items that we need to take a look at before moving on to council requests? Um, so I just want, to, so last night it threw me off just a little bit. I'm sorry, I had just absolutely forgotten about the um, June 9th thing that we were looking at doing and now it's the 10th. But I, for some reason in my head, I thought we were going to send out an email to that in effect and I didn't follow up at all. So I totally take ownership of that. But could we um, in the future when we, let's just together remind each other how we're going to do this so that if we do want to do it during council meeting, if it could be listed under mayor's choice or something that... I, it would remind me to do it uh, just and then yeah that's all and then the covid maybe we just everybody knows that that's constantly under the manager's report so it always just populates up into that it's actually technically its own agenda item place and i do apologize about that that would um, i will take ownership for that um, but i will make sure that it is in all of the rest of them uh, moving forward and i've actually gone in and went ahead and went put them in for june as well so i'll continue to have those as a individual agenda item for you guys and again i do extremely apologize about that it, it, <laughs> <is okay. laughs> i think we're all sort of figuring this out as we go i just um i feel like i'm I don't know why, but screens, you know, so many screens in front of me trying to keep, it feels like I'm keeping track of more details than normal and we're not. It's the same amount of details. It's just in a flat world. Out of curiosity on the future study session topics, what is the communications update, the focus of that discussion? I think it was about the overall, wasn't it a little bit a little about, bit about website? website. Um, we have the website update um, come schedule already. I believe that was in regards to just their communications plan and um, basically just an oversight of that. Okay. Sounds good. 
Oh yeah, I, I, that's right. I'd like to ask about the illegal evictions. I think that was brought up because of concerns about people being evicted under COVID, and it wasn't because the city participates in evictions. What that suggests to me is somebody is basically interested not in not in the city's role in that, but in what the rules are. Um, does anybody have any broader understanding of that? Is that something that we should put in report form? I actually think report form might be better. I heard a story this morning on um, all of the misinformation going around regarding uh, uh, some of the ev eviction concerns that are going to be looming in August and how Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac backed loans really do allow for pushing for, for landlords to push their um, payments to the end of like a 30 year. It's, you know, it's like 30 years plus whatever months and that they're not there's not a strong understanding of some of that. And that's where some of the eviction stuff might start to happen because not because landlords are upset with anyone or think they're bad tenants. It's just that they're trying to make make ends meet. I just wonder if there's a little bit more of a informational piece that's written down or people can go back to it. And let me look into that and see if if we can get a report generated for at least the city council to have something to reference. Again, I, I'm walking that fine line because I don't want there to be any implication that there's anything the city can do to step in and interfere in a private contract between other parties. But I didn't think the question was asking us to interfere. I think someone was just wanting to know how the rules changed under COVID, but that was that was long enough ago. I, if anybody can remember more than that, I'd be happy to understand it. I think you're right and you might want to ask. Um, I think members Russell and member Stone had a conversation that was both of their concerns in some way. OK, I'll follow up. Yeah, I was going to say uh, city manager Lewis, if you have a one on one with them this week, you may want to ask that question of them. OK. All right, um, if there's nothing else on that, um, on, on the future items, I did have a couple of follow ups. Um, we're, I'm gonna go ahead and have staff reach out to the billiards hall. Um, as I alluded to last night, and that would be for regarding the variant, potential variants um, uh, for reopening that. Um, I, as I mentioned last night, um, certainly we can help with that. Um, but the onus is going to really be on the business to come up with a plan for um, how he or she can, you know, uh, arrange that. And oh, Daniel, it sounds like from your discussions with them, they've already done most of that work. Yeah. So, city manager, I think Allison McKinney Brown came up, uh, got a memo last night from the governor that may actually make this all moot anyway. Oh, great. Yeah, I I actually got it in. I was going through my email about eight this morning and read that the the governor issued an executive order last night at some point after our meeting ended and it was saying that brew pubs can open i'm reading the language right now um these regulations are effective today and include the ability for bars brew pubs etc to also open for dining if they serve food which the governor has described as businesses that have changed their business model to partner with a restaurant or food truck now the only way to partner with a restaurant would be if there's a restaurant in the area that you partner with that they can bring food into your bar or, or a food truck that's parked down the street but the, it wouldn't I wouldn't know how else they could do this. So anyway, I, I've i not dived in yet to what exactly has been written out, but letting you know, apparently the governor has been getting pressure on that same point. So what would be the next steps with that, um, Allison, in terms of, you know, felt in particular, because I, I don't think they're, they're, they're not considered a proof of, and I think based off his email, and Sean, if you look, read his email, he, he basically outlines all the steps he's gonna take. Um, but anyway, he, I think he classified himself as an arcade. Um, and that's the reason why he's saying that he can't open. So obviously that didn't fall under the executive over order. So I'm just trying to figure out what are the next steps? Do, does the business have to reach out to somebody? Do we reach 
out on his behalf? What are the, the next steps? The waiver goes through the county. So um, in order to get a waiver, we as the city would have to have to get the county to agree to present it to I, what it goes to the county to track county health up to the governor. So we don't have any ability to go directly from the city level to the governor. The other thing that I'm wondering, and I have no information, is because they are, they are an arcade and there's been a lot of pressure from um, like the gambling resorts and other places where people just go to be entertained. If if there's if we're not going to get some information out on that pretty quickly, I'm I would think they would all fall under a similar heading in the um, for the governor to be approaching. So in the meantime, yeah, we can jump through the various hoops that would get us up to the county to see if Tri County would be interested in in pursuing that as a variance. But right. things are I've coming pretty fast. I would go directly to Tri County to begin with, just to ask them how they're going. How would they interpret this one, and what would we need to do? Um, because I, I, the county won't know, I don't think, because they don't oversee that kind of thing. Um, they're just the the gatekeeper, though, to present something to Tri County then. Right. For right. waiver. So I, I think if we can call somebody, I don't know if it's Melissa or who, <clears throat> Melissa Sager or who, I don't know. John, can you have somebody from staff take the lead on this? Yeah, I was going to say, Dorothy, with your remaining three days, is this uh, something you could call reach out to Melissa? I've got she's an attorney with Tri County and I've got her contact info if you don't. No, I'd be happy to give it a try. Yeah, and just FYI, they actually do serve food. So um, I think just the fact that they go under the umbrella of arcade gaming, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's the issue. So. I just think it's interesting that the governor's already saying that businesses can change their business model. So whereas pre-COVID, their business model might have been primarily um, arcade, at this point, could they temporarily change their business model? And, and is that even necessary? Are we going to get another, get something else out from the governor this week specifically about places that entertain? So. There's just a lot of questions that I don't have the answer to yet because I just got the information through at 3 a.m. Right. right. <laughs> 3 a.m. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to uh, the, uh, well, continuing with the items that we heard last night. Um, I, we did have the request from um, Councilmember Russell to consider reopening um, the Mali Center at the same time. Um, and so we'll we'll do kind of an assessment on that and maybe do a staff memo for um, council on number one, what um, the senior centers throughout the region are doing, and then also um, you know precautions that we can take. One of the things that she actually had a great idea was to really kind of germ proof the Mali Center. Um, which, of course, is a, a little longer term um, prospect, but um, we've got a plan that we've submitted to Arapahoe County for CARES funding to, you know, provide for some shielding, um, for carpeting, uh, replacing the carpeting with this more of a solid surface that can be cleaned more easily. So um, we are working in some of those, but it is going to take, you know, months to get that work done. Um, we also um, had the request for the strategic plan um, overview, and so I did want to just see if we can plug that into your agenda um, for <clears throat> an upcoming agenda session. I'm sorry, I just uh, got distracted there. Which, what did you just say? I'm looking at the screen. Uh, the strategic plan um, that's based on your visioning session back in January. Um, yes. Yeah, so if we can plug that in, uh, I think the um, the sooner the better, but I want to be respectful of you guys' council uh, time, meeting times. Do you see a place where we can do that? I'm not sure of times for the study session of the 15th, um, but would that potentially be a good place for it? You know, it's possible that I, I'm going to need, um, I would actually, we've, we've actually had two study sessions on this already, and I can remind council of that, um, because you guys actually reviewed, um, you know, the, the 
the notes first from your visioning session, and then you reviewed and gave feedback, actually quite a bit of feedback, on our specific goals that we've um, put to those. Um, and so, and then we actually, I think we had a third item, maybe this was during the second, where you looked at our action plan on how we were going to achieve those goals. So um, we have had some discussions, it's just been a while. So um, I think at this point, I'm gonna need some decisions made on that as opposed to just direction. So I think we can put that on a regular session if you guys are okay with that. It's fine if that's what you need. Yeah, so maybe um, if June 15th, looks like quite a few contracts and IGAs, but I don't think it's gonna be um, topics that are going to take a lot of time. Um, so would that be okay to stick that on June 15th? Sure. Great. Would you give me the title one more time, Sean? Sure. Um, it's going to be a strategic plan overview and um, finalization. I think it might be most descriptive. But I'll be asking council, um, and I, I can send this out in advance because we just closed the public survey yesterday, um, and we'll be getting that out um, to council along with your your responses and the kind of the aggregate of all of that. And so you can look over that. But during this, but on June 15th, I'm really going to need to actually get a vote from council, um, you know, on the prioritization. There will be some discussion, but I really would love to finalize the prioritization um, for the goals so that we really kind of know what you guys want us to work on first. So if I have a question mm -hmm. on that. So I, I, we haven't talked about the. So last night, a member Russell brought up BAC and a conversation. Is this different than that about somehow there was some feedback on the plan? from them, I thought, was I misunderstanding? And she wanted to have that kind of a conversation with all of us. I thought we have had our conversations, but maybe not everyone thinks that. So we need to, We. I would be worried about making a vote, having a vote that night, if not everyone felt like we'd had a conversation already. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so what they actually did, and I've got my notes in front of me, um, they made some changes just to the more, more the wording of some of the goals, they really thought instead of um, climate, um, I think we use the term climate variability, they, they suggested weather variability. Um, so that was more of just a wording change. They suggested that we change people experiencing homelessness uh, and focusing uh, in, instead on the underemployed or the unemployed. Um, they felt it was unnecessarily focusing on um, homelessness when in fact um, there were more issues than just around that goal than just homelessness and then um, well I would I, so I think those things are good to bring up I, I would not I would not omit the words homelessness <laughs> yeah I, I do think it's an issue of underemployed unemployed but we also have unhoused that have other issues mental health issues um, other kinds of societal issues. So I wouldn't want to totally take that term out, but I get where they're they're getting to. And, and I agree with them. There's a lot of, and that's why I think member Stone is concerned about empl um, employment development. Right. Yeah, and it was under, it's under that goal. So, um, and I did mention to them that I thought that during the visioning session that council member Stone had brought that up. Um, and then just one other change on um, one of our goals on South Broadway, they thought that would fit better under local economy. So that wasn't a big change. Um, so anyway, yeah, we can kind of go over those just minor suggestions and edits. And then um, certainly if we need, a, there will be a refresher on kind of the goals. But again, we have already um, had that discussion. And my need at this point to move forward is the prioritization, but we'll maybe have, make it two parts. Overview of the goals as they stand today and the, and the action plans that go with those goals, plus, um, you know, prioritization of uh, the plan. I, I'm just, I'm just nervous about doing that all in one night and having 
if if we're going to make changes to words, to me, changing from climate to weather is a big shift. And I, I mean, we can take their advice or we cannot. But if we're going to have a conversation about this and then vote that night, I'm worried that we won't uh, be able to do that all in one night if we haven't talked about it. I don't know. Maybe sure. I'm being too concerned about stuff. I don't know. Mayor Pro Tem, do you have any thoughts on that? Sorry, I caught the back end of that, Mayor. Uh, from what I can hear, we're changing the wording on it. And I, I, I agree with you that I, I, I'm hesitant to change the wording on it. But again, I missed the first half of it, so I'm not sure the reason we did. Um, well, it's just that we, um, and Sean needs us to, to vote on a prioritization, which I totally get that. So do we need a conversation about some of the changing in word before we actually go to prioritization? And we already gave you some prioritization perspective, right? With our with, with your what survey with the survey that we did. Yes, but I think as as everyone agrees, we need to do that in a public meeting as right. per a vote. We haven't talked about it yet, so uh, I guess we can massage it while we're in the midst of it. I our our norm is to usually to do that in a study session and then bring it back to a regular and vote on it. Yeah, that's fine. That's no problem. Um, okay. so, so let's do maybe the 15th. So the 15th for that, and then we'd bring it back for a vote on the 6th or something or what? Or do you need us to vote that night is what I'm asking? No, no, no. Um, the 6th would be fine. Um, and we could either do that on the 15th or the 22nd. The 22nd looks a little lighter, actually, doesn't it? Yeah, that, let's do that. And then we can bring it back for you on the 6th. Well, I want to double check whether on the 15th, you, the utility funds overview, I mean, my understanding is that that was all going to be on the 22nd, but I, I could be misinformed. So there may be room on the 15th for the agenda. I, I think you're right that he said last night the 22nd. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Well, it would it would help me actually to have it on the 15th. Um, yeah, if he can do it then. Okay, we'll we'll double check that. Good catch, Dorothy. Um, and then that's all I had in terms of the request from last night. Okay. Good. Anything else? Clicking along here. Nothing else. All Not right. Not from us. Well, everybody have a great rest of the short week. Sounds great, guys. All right, you too. Thank Bye -bye. you. Have a good day. It's adjourned. Bye. Bye.